Who's coming next? We die. Who did we finish? We die. I'll ask you. And before I'll ask you, there to go. So you have to finish it. It's written in the stars. It's written in the stars. You gotta believe it. You gotta believe it. You gotta believe it. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the African Football Roundup where we're rounding up all of the action of African football over the weekend and this weekend was absolutely sensational. Uh, we had the second leg of the African Football League final between Mamelodi Sundowns and Widad Casablanca. In the first leg, uh, Widad Casablanca won 2-1 and they carried that lead over to Pretoria this weekend, but Mamelodi Sundowns end up winning 2-0. Uh, goals by Peter Shalulile who came back after uh, injury and who hadn't yet played a match in the African Football League. And the second goal was by Aubrey Modiba, uh, Rulani McQuinn, as versatile player who can play left back, central midfield, and, and who's been doing a, really a great job for him tactically. Um, and so Sundowns have finally done it. I mean, one week ago, we sat here and we talked to you about the questions that we had, you know, can Sundowns harness those intangibles? and step up and play, you know, when the tough gets going and the going gets tough. And it seemed like in the first half of this match, that's exactly how this match was going to go. It was very stop and start. We ended up playing nearly 60 minutes. I believe the first half was 58 minutes because of uh, 12 or 13 minutes of uh, additional time. And you could see we dead players wasting time already in the first half, and they were playing quite defensive with a low block. And you could see... Some Sundowns players were getting frustrated, and Mokwena, again, this was a huge test for him because he's the youngest, most brilliant tactical mind in African football, but there were always questions about his ability to step up in these high-pressure situations and man-manage his players. Um, and he was, I, I saw him do this gesture in the first half, like, one-track mind, don't get distracted. This was as, I believe it was uh, El Bahri, the, the Widad striker, went down quite easily and, and was obviously wasting time. And then just maybe a minute or two before Mamelodi Sundowns opened the scoring, he goes and he pulls Tebo Mokwena, his central defender slash center half over, and he says something to him. Uh, it seemed like he was telling him to be more direct. And sure enough, one or two minutes later, Mokwena's busting through, being extremely influential in the build-up play, gets a shot off, and Peter Shalalili very coolly slots in uh, Sundowns' first goal. So we could quite clearly see in the first half that Rulani Makwena, his man management, on top of the tactics, the man management made a real big difference. Um, the second half, I was curious to see if Sundowns would continue playing with courage and confidence because that's really what they do. They'll hold on to the football, they'll, they'll press high up because they had the away goal advantage, they had enough to sit back and just absorb pressure and, and try to play that game, albeit it is quite a dangerous strategy as well. Um, but I think it says a lot about McQuinn and his team that they were courageous. They did take the match till we did. They continued to dominate possession. They continued to create chances. Um, and they were rewarded by it. I mean, that, that press that they had, uh, Modiba nips in, steals the ball, and what a cool, cool finish from him as well. Um I did see in the last 10 minutes as well, Sundowns employ the dark arts. Sundowns who um, I think at times I felt, you know, that they felt like I would say begrieved a little bit. Like they, they're they not always happy with the way these North African clubs play them. But they, I think I saw Mudao, uh, Williams, Mokwena all get booked in the last six or seven minutes. There was a period of time in the match where I think it was for four or five minutes Sundowns were supposed to, supposed to play a free kick and the player that was supposed to play the free kick would get booked and somebody would replace him and then they would get booked and then somebody would replace him and they would get booked. I've never seen something like that. And so that was uh, that was quite interesting. But the fact that they're willing to employ the dark arts, I think that bodes well for the Champions League push that they're going to have uh, in a few months' time. So overall, I think this is a really great victory for African football because... We have this young, talented coach that the entire continent believes in. And we're not sure if he can do something that's needed of great coaches, which is step up on the big occasions. And he stepped up and he passed this test with flying colors. 
Sundowns are the first African club to win the African Football League. Now can they do it one more time in the CAF Champions League? Um, in the post-match press conference, I was quite impressed with Golani Makuena. Uh, again, I, you listen to the guy, he's quite obviously very intelligent, very humble. He starts <laughs> the press conference for nine straight minutes thanking everybody, from his players to his staff to the an- an analysts, to the administrators, to the photographers, to the security in the stadium, the cooks, everybody, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, and then had like very kind words for we dead. Um, and, and overall, I think just you could see the, the way that he, the, the, how close he is to the players. Mudell brought the trophy over during the press conference. And it seems like he proved that not only is he a great tactician, he's obviously a great man manager and he knows how to connect with his players and, and everybody around the club. He's completely in tune with the identity of the club. And on top of all of that, he managed to harness the intangibles and step up on the big occasion. So hats off to Rolani Makwena, hats off to Mamelodi Sundowns. Um, and I would just like to see them do it again and again and again and again and again. Because the more they do it, the higher his profile rises, the further he can go in his career. And I think Makwena achieving great success will really be like a rising tide that's going to lift all boats for African football coaching. Besides the African Football League final, uh, this last week I was quite honored uh, to be included in the CAF Awards Committee, uh, the the media committee, who are going to be voting on uh, nominees of the 2023 CAF Awards. And so what I'm going to be doing is every week just uh, giving you a category and how I voted, and I'm going to try to justify that just in the interest of full transparency. So I'll start with... The first category that I actually filled out was the club of the year. And I voted Al-Ahli of Egypt um, club of the year. And the way I I was justifying all of this to myself was I weighted competitions. So CAF Champions League is the most important competition. And then how did the club do in their local domestic league? And then how did they do in uh, the cups? And then finally, uh, the Club World Cup as well. So, um, Al Ahli, CAF Champions League champions, Egyptian Premier League champions, the final of the Egypt Cup, and then the semi final of the Club World Cup. And it's just that I think at times we get bored of Al Ahli's success, but when you look at that year, I mean, it's, it's simply incredible. And they're Africa's club of the century for a region, for a reason. And, uh, I, suspect that they're going to continue this kind of success in the in the coming year. My second club of the year, and this was very, very close, is USM of Algiers, simply because they had two continental titles, the CAF Confederation Cup and the CAF Super Cup. The major negative point against USM of Algiers is that I believe they finished, I want to say 13th last year in the Algerian League, which is horrible. Um, and they didn't win the Algerian Cup either. So the fact that they have two pieces of silverware put them over the third club for me, which was Mamelodi Sundowns. And Sundowns, they didn't make it to the CAF Champions League final. They didn't win any of their domestic cups. But the way they won the South African PSL was, I think, so, so impressive. They nearly set records for, you know, number of goals scored, goals against, number of points accumulated. They didn't in the end, but they were like flying through everybody and just at the very end stumbled. Um, So Sundowns are my third club of the year. Young Africans, number four, Yanga, uh, CAF Confederation Cup final, but they also won the league in the cup. Um, and then finally, finally, um, I have we did Athletic Club of Casablanca, who made a CAF Champions League final, but they didn't win the, the, the league, domestic league. Uh, they lost, I believe it was in the last day or two, and they didn't win the cup either, so just giving them a lot of props for making it in that Champions League final. So that's how I voted for Club of the Year in the interest of full transparency. Uh, a lot of great clubs like Esperance de Tunis didn't make it. Um, but I, I do feel quite confident that El Ahli should be the Club of the Year. If you want to debate about Sundowns or Yanga or USM of Algiers being second, third or fourth, I think that's understandable. But El Ahli quite clearly, in my opinion, should be the uh, Club of the Year. And finally, we're going to be going over the, the team of the week for this weekend. Um, 
There were a lot of strikers that scored goals. Uh, Jackson Muleka, Besiktas, Taiwa Oniwi, Nottingham Forest, um, Nicholas Jackson, Chelsea. But I wasn't like blown away by any of their performances. So what I did was I put Mohamed Salah up top in a 4-3-3. On the left, we have Simon Andingra, who was man of the match for Brighton. On the right, Moses Simon for Nantes, who I believe also put in a man of the match worthy performance. Uh, my midfield three are Id- Idrissa Ganagay, even though he didn't start for Everton, but he was absolutely essential in, in them beating Crystal Palace this weekend. Uh, a pre-assist or a hockey assist and a goal for him. Mario Lamina scored Wolves winning goal against Spurs and has been looking so, so impressive, especially in the second half against Spurs. But I didn't think that Mario Lamina would have this renaissance and, and surge in his career that he has had uh, in the Premier League. So I'm very happy to swallow my my words there and and... I hope to continue to see him progress, and I'm curious to see if, well, I was going to say it's curious to see if he's going to be with Gabon and Cote d'Ivoire, but I don't believe Gabon have qualified, so uh, that's not going to be possible. Finally, the, the last of my midfield three is the Tunisian Elias Khiri, uh, the man who has 10 lungs, who's consistently been Bundesliga, um, most distance covered. Uh, he can slide in as a center half, and, and he pitched in with a goal for Eintracht Frankfurt, and Anybody that's interested in North African football should be watching Eintracht Frankfurt because in addition to Elias Khiri from Tunisia, they have Amar Manmouche from Egypt and Fereh Shaibi from Algeria. And they're just so fun to watch. Three underrated, very valuable players that, in my opinion, um, are going to be doing great things at the AFCON. Finally, the back line is a back four. Uh, Kevin van der Kerkhoff on the right is the Algeria's new uh, right back. He plays for Metz, has a goal and an assist also known as Kevin Gitun. Uh, he was man of the match for Mets. We have uh, three Ivorians that could have been in the center back pairing. Um, I ended up picking Odlan Kosonu, who scored a goal, and Wilfred Singo for the second week in a row. Wilfred Singo is just so strong on the tackle. Um, and Monaco ended up keeping a shutout, but we could have in- included Evan Indica, who wasn't the most impressive with Roma, but they kept another shutout as well. And he's putting in solid performances. And I'm very curious to see how Jean-Louis Gasset is going to be picking his center half pairing for Cote d'Ivoire uh, come two months now in the AFCON. And finally, another great performer for Wolves this weekend, Ryan Itnouri on left as left back. I know he was subbed off when they scored their two goals, but I was very impressed with his performance. And finally, finally... Mori Diao, Senegalese goalkeeper uh, for Clermont Foot, who kept a shutout as Clermont won 1 0, and he's been probably a top five goalkeeper in France this season. And I'm curious to see if he can push Edouard Mundy out of the starting position for the Turing Alliance in Cote d'Ivoire. So that's it for this week. Thanks for checking in. Um, remember, on Friday, we're going to be continuing the African Five Aside podcast. So far, we're looking at African heads of state. And the relationship with football, we've profiled Kemal Abdel Nasser, we've profiled Kwame Nkrumah, and uh, this time around we're going to be uh, profiling another African head of state, this time not from North Africa and not from West Africa, so stay tuned to see who it is.